Hello, good evening. Hope you are well. Uh, this is Storehouse Live at 5 o'clock. Um, thank you for being here. We know there's an important football match on today. I've already seen the first bit of the score, so whether you are for or against whichever team, I hope it goes well for you. Um, I've got my cup of tea today. Um, I normally have a cup of tea just after I've come back from Tesco and I forgot to make one. So um, we just like to be relaxed. You know, there's nothing um, special or made up. You know, we've got a little bit of the stage thing going on here, but really we just plugged in some wires to make the sound a bit louder so that the phone can record it a little bit better. Um, so grab a cup of tea. Join us for some worship today. Now, if you've been uh, listening for the last couple of weeks, you'll have heard us doing a little bit of a series. Not that we ever planned it to be a series, but a session on vineyard distinctives. And what that means is what we believe in as the Vineyard Church. The first thing we talked about was the kingdom, the kingdom of God. We are kingdom people who believe that the kingdom of God is here right now, but also it is to come. And you might think, well, that sounds a bit confusing, but we call it the now. God is here now. His kingdom reigns now but he's not yet established on earth. And whilst we wait for Jesus to return to his kingdom, we, the church, prepare that place. And we don't do it by ourselves, but we do it with the Holy Spirit's strength and guidance. And so we also talked about healing and the fact that we believe that God heals today. And if you remember, I had a frozen shoulder and some really poor neck pain and which Sarah prayed for and I was healed from and although I've still got a bit of a frozen shoulder um, everything else that was being attributed to that has gone um, and so I'm really thankful for that thank you for Sarah for praying and we just hope that as we um, sing today you pray for healing you know if anything comes to your mind and you think you know I think somebody out there need some prayer because they're finding it a bit wheezy in their breathing and that God is just pressing that on your mind and you think I just pray for whoever that is you could even write it in the chat and just say I think somebody watching has got trouble with their breathing um, I'd like to pray for you that person might be there and they might say it's me give them your name and they can have your name and you can pray for them use the media that's there to do that um, and then last week we talked about the prophetic, we talked about words of knowledge, and we talked about prophecy, and we talked about pictures and impressions that we get from um, God. And you might remember that I have a string break, which is really annoying because it was a brand new set of strings, so it shouldn't have broken at all. Um, and so I just thought at the time, you know, that is for somebody that... You know, all the strings on the guitar are tuned to be in harmony um, with the box that makes the sound. And if one of them goes, it goes out of harmony. It's almost like a frequency isn't tuned in. And maybe that was you and you needed to get back with God. Or maybe um, it wasn't. But that was what we used that for in terms of a prophetic um, impression about how that and why that happened because really brand new sets of strings don't break um, and today I want to talk about something that's a little bit more um, unusual because I find it's the hardest thing for me to do and to even try out and I've tried this out a number of times and I've always felt that I've been a pretty big failure at it and it's called speaking in tongues now that name sounds a bit weird. Now if you go to the book of Acts, you'll find an event there where the Holy Spirit is poured out on a group of people listening to Peter speak about the gospel. Now this was in Jerusalem. It was a festival and many people had gone to the temple to offer sacrifices to Yahweh 
in the temple, Peter took the opportunity to get up and talk about Jesus, or Yeshua. And in the talk, the Holy Spirit, which was promised by God, was released on the congregation watching. And as they were all from different countries and had different languages, they could all hear Peter talk in their own language. And what was amazing is that that was a restoration of something that happened in the Old Testament. And it's in our modern culture, it's called the Tower, Tower of Babel. And the Tower of Babel was a, a story of a civilization who thought that they could attain godliness if they could build a tower big enough to reach the sky, they could touch God. And part of that was the idea that they were invincible. They could build and do anything that they wanted, even become like God and touch the sky. Um, and in that story, God sees what they are doing and he's, he's angry by the fact that they were trying to align themselves as godlike. And so he cursed them with multiple languages and nobody could understand themselves and the city um, fell back from its height because the lack of communication meant that it wasn't as successful. And we, in this story in Acts, we have a restoration of that through the gift of tongues and that's one way that people can do that and i've heard that a few times where someone has been singing a worship song or preaching a message from god and someone in the audience has heard it in their language and that happens today and the second way of speaking in tongues is a personal prayer now, the reason why I'm a bit apprehensive is I'm not very good at it. I have OCD. If you know me and you're part of the volunteer team, I do have OCD. It might look pretty messy behind me, but I know exactly what's in each box and where it's located because of my OCD. Now, because of that, my brain, the reasoning that I have, stops me from expressing my love language that God has placed in me and we call that the gift of tongues. Now I used to teach graphical design and um, I used to do a lesson called drawing on the right side of the brain. Now some of you might know that the left hand side of your brain does the right and the right hand side of your brain does the left but there's an also another part to that in that one side of your brain is logical, is rational, is mathematic, is your reasoning centre, and that's on the left. But your creativity is on the right. And thinking about all the children going back to school, they've probably not been practising their thinking logical brain, or if you're parents, you realise that it's really hard to teach them that. But they spend all their career in school practising how to be logical, methodical, scientific, use language that follows rules, mathematical equations, and so on. But it's those eureka moments that we get, like when we have a, an equation, like Einstein's theory of relativity, where they have that eureka moment, that light bulb, and the creativity of the maths merge together to produce something wonderful. And that's what artists do. They look at the form and the order of the world and their imagination, their creativity, turns that into an expression of art and you go, wow, look at that, I've never seen that like that before. And so that's what I used to try and do with the children. And so I'd get them to um, write their name out formally and then underneath it I would say, write your signature. And when you write your signature, you use your right hand side of your brain because you become all artistic and put swirls and curls and all sorts of things in. But if you are more of a left hand brain thinker, even though your signature could be any style you like, it might still be really easy to read and still quite formal. I have to say that I am like that, even though I've taught graphics. And so for me, 
when I've asked about the gift of speaking in tongues, I have tried it. I've heard something odd, because that's what my brain thinks. I've tried to put it into some form of order. And so that gifting in me stops. Um, because it's a supernatural gifting. I have gone on for quite a while now, but I need to explain that if it doesn't happen to you today, then don't worry. But it's a gift. It's not something that you have. It's something that God gifts you and is something that you can use to express your inner self when the words you have on the page or your prayer life is exhausted and you don't know what to say. And some people can do it naturally, like switching on a light switch um, and access that. And some people like myself can't. So I'm just going to, we're going to pray and we're going to sing and have a cup of tea, hopefully. And we're going to say, Lord, this is as relaxed as we can be. This is our home. Um, we know you want to give gifts to us. And we ask for the gift of speaking in tongues. Now, we've been to many conferences, Sarah and I. There's a guy called Mike Pulabachi. The conference is called Soul Survivor. I've got a jumper on, you might be able to see it, called Soul. And he does this amazing sketch where he goes, rum, rum, come on a Honda, or something like that, he says, to make a sort of like a Mickey take of the process of speaking in tongues. But what he's trying to say is, don't be too serious about this. Um, so we're going to give some time to that today. Um, I'm not going to promise that I will do it because I've explained that already. And obviously I'm in a, um, a frame of mind where I've got a set of songs, I've got a time scale, I've got my guitar playing to think about, my singing to think about. Neither of those are any good. And so I try and my best to make sure it is as good as it can be. That is going to stop the natural flow of what's going on. But, and it's a big but, we have the Holy Spirit. It's a gifting. It's the Holy Spirit's gift to you from the Father. And he wants you to use that because there's something unique in it. Because it's a call to heaven. It's a language that you can use. But it's a heavenly language and it connects you to the Father in a way that you probably cannot do. And that's why I still, even though I don't do it very well, encourage you to ask for that gift, to have a go with it. So I'm going to have a cup of tea. And uh, there's nothing special to say. Um, but we do need to dial down and think about um, the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And um, so we're just going to pray before we start. Lord, um, come into the places where we are. Lord, more importantly, come into our hearts. Come and fill us afresh with your presence. Lord, where this week, with all of its problems, has now come to an end, let's look afresh to what's to come. Thank you, Jesus. Now, as we offer you this time of worship, we ask, Lord, come and equip us to worship you with our whole being, with our whole self. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and release the gift of tongues in our places of worship. Lord, let our hearts be on fire for you. Lord, set straight our crooked paths. Lord, scoop us up when we've been down in the pit. And Lord, where we are drained by the emotional fatigue that has been this last week. Lord, come and set us on our feet again through the power of the Holy Spirit, alive and reigning in each
each of us. And Lord, let us express that joy through songs of fellowship. Amen.
powerful name is in the name of Jesus Christ my King what a powerful name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name
dies for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you fight for me.
bridges, what you construct in your lives that you think you have to do to meet what God wants. Religious. It just binds us to a lifestyle that when it doesn't work, it becomes fruitless. And we cast it aside. What we're saying in the song is just cast aside any religious behaviors that we think we have to perform.
and our brokenness, but in that we don't despair. We bring that to the Father and say, Lord, I know the wretched person that I am. And I know the mistakes I keep on making. And I need your presence in my life to come and rescue my soul before my bitterness and twisted soul becomes the defining person.
Yeah, as we go our separate ways, I pray, Holy Spirit, His presence is here with us now. I pray, Holy Spirit, hold us ever closer to your bosom. Let us feel the warmth of your embrace. And let us nestle in to your presence for today and for tomorrow. And I pray for all those whose children are going back to school and the change of routine. Those weary from homeschooling, caught in the anxiety of sending their children to school, but looking for a sense of peace and a quiet cup of coffee. God be in all of that today, this evening as the children prepare. Lord, let their night's sleep be fantastic. Lord, let them get ready for bed and settle in and find it easy to fall asleep because you are holding them close to your heart. Lord, let the parents know that Jesus has got this, that he is big enough and he is able to do immeasurably more than we can think or dream or imagine. For he is for us. He doesn't stand against us. So come, Holy Spirit. Come into our place and never let us go. Amen. So thank you for tuning in. We hope that it does go well with you this week. And if you're struggling, just remember you can always close your eyes, take a breath, and ask for the Lord's strength. And wherever it is that you might be, God will be there for you. And his strength will sustain you. Night, night.